Hi, it's Louise Spiral Bright Insight. I wanted to um, just highlight a couple of um, things that are coming up this week. I am recording this on Wednesday, the 23rd of October. Um, and before I even go any further, I just wanted to sort of highlight the fact that for me personally, um, time is doing really weird things at the moment and I'm finding that I don't really know what day it is a lot of the time or that I kind of, you know, it's the beginning of the week, Monday, Tuesday, but actually I feel like I've already got to the end of the week and I'm kind of surprising myself when I sort of check in and see where I am, what time it is, what day it is, etc. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that's not just me. Um, I am obviously aware that time is collapsing in, in many ways and that, you know, as we sort of move into higher frequencies, there's going to be a lot less attachment to linear time and to a structured way of being. Um, and my feeling is that this is sort of the start of that and it's really starting to become more obvious. But I would be interested to hear if, you know, if you are experiencing similar things. I did wonder if it was due to the fact that, um, you know, because I'm working from home completely now, you know, I don't have as much structure as perhaps I had before, but I don't, um, I'm not sure that that is the case. So let me know what you think. But um, yeah, I, I'm just conscious that on Friday this week, the 25th of October, the sun is going to align with the Shapley attractor. Now, this is one of the cosmic points. It is the most powerful cosmic point that we work with in galactic astrology. And, you know, this is a very strong magnetic force um, that really from a human perspective is going to kind of be quite overwhelming, quite difficult to really put into words. But I just wanted to kind of bring up some of the sort of signatures of this cosmic point and suggest how that might play out. Because obviously the sun meets with this point every year and um, it lies at two degrees of Scorpio. So this is an annual event, but in particular, it is um, even stronger this year because um, obviously the ruling planet of Scorpio, Pluto, is at the very, very final point of Capricorn. And so, you know, we're already sort of anticipating a big shift as Pluto moves into Aquarius in the middle of November. But as the sun meets the Shapley, it feels like it's giving more power to Pluto um, in particular and the work that Pluto is doing. And a lot of the sort of energies of the Shapley are really interesting and really align with a lot of the work that I feel Pluto is doing as he moves through the very final minutes of Capricorn. Now, obviously, you know, we've talked about Pluto in Capricorn, you know, to death this year, death being quite an, um, a sort of um, appropriate word because Pluto is, you know, the lord of um, destruction but also the lord of creation. So, you know, this is very much about death and destruction death and destruction, about renewal, about the crumbling of the old. And when we're working with the Shapley attractor and particularly when the sun comes around to align and really empower and light up this cosmic point in the chart. And this is for all of us. Obviously, if you have something close to two degrees of Scorpio in your natal chart, you're going to feel the Shapley really, really strongly and intensely in your life in general. But this is going to feel really strong for the collective. And what the energy of the Shapley attractor really does is to expose what has been hidden because the Shapley, the frequency of the Shapley is ultimately about truth. So it's very difficult when the Shapley is activated for anything that is not sort of rooted in truth and integrity to survive. Literally, everything will fall away. Maths, masks, sorry, fall, veils lift, curtains are pulled back and really you have to stand in your absolute pure authentic self and obviously you know it's not difficult to see how this might be playing out at a collective level but really the Shapley is just pushing us to ask for the truth this is a quest for truth and it is also um 
you know, about being able to really step into the darkness um, to a really large degree, because it is only through doing that and really looking at the shadow square in the face that we can then sort of bring the light into the shadow. This isn't about turning a blind eye, turning away, not wanting to look at the shadow. You know, as we are moving into Scorpio season now, you know, this is very much about being pulled into the depths to look into those darker places, perhaps where we've either been scared to look at or ashamed or unwilling to really venture into before. You know, this is the time when we are really facing our fears, facing our shadows. And, you know, with the Shapley, it is like a really powerful invisible force. So you can't see it, but you're going to really feel it. Um, that is just pulling us back to source, back to the truth, back to all that is, but very much, you know, with integrity, with authenticity at the forefront of um, our minds and of our experience. Um, so anything that is not pure, that is not um, true, is going to fall away at this time. And obviously, you know, we're going to see that playing out at a personal level, but also very much at a collective level. You know, this is very much a point of deep healing, but also of regeneration, of renewal, and of rebirth as well through the strong Scorpio signature. And what's also really super interesting is that Haumea, which is one of the dwarf planets, um, the goddess of fertility and creation, is at one degree of Scorpio. So she is getting very, very close to the Shapley. Um, you know, and obviously the sun is activating her, you know, in at the in these days as well and this is very much about sort of bringing um the truth of you know this this signature this energy signature and Hermea is very much about fertility about bringing new life in about renewal and regeneration about honoring the sacredness of life and that whole process that we go through to be able to be here to bring life to others you know to bring life through others the female role um and how you know how divine and sacred that process is it's also about um you know, helping us ultimately to bring in this new level of consciousness, which in itself is a birthing process. And I think, you know, if you're in the sort of spiritual spheres, you will have been aware of people talking about these birthing pains and, um, you know, these labor pains that we are going through and that we have been going through. And, you know, and acknowledging that this is not an easy process. It takes hard work. It is painful. It's physically challenging as well as mentally and emotional, you know, and this is you know, something that we have agreed to at soul level to come in and support. But in many ways, we are birthing something new from ourselves. You know, we kind of often focus this on it being a collective experience. And of course it is, you know, it's Mother Earth birthing a new version of herself. But actually, you know, we are all doing it individually as well. So, you know, I just want to acknowledge that and sort of say kudos to us all for being here and playing that part because, you know, we are all have a unique role to play in this process. Um, but it is also about, with, with Halmia, it is about cutting through um, old patterns um, so that we can sort of infuse and birth this beautiful new energy, which is going to be much more aligned with nature, with um, sort of the sacred and divine way, um, a much higher level of consciousness. You know, again, we've talked about new earth and many, many people are talking about new earth and it's hard to know exactly what new earth is going to look look like or feel like and um, but there is just this innate trust that you know it is where we are heading and it is going to be so beautiful and so much more aligned with um what you know as star seeds we have experienced in other realms in other dimensions and in other star systems and um, now so that is sort of um you know, Homia is being very much affected by the Shapley and this sort of 
you know, extra boost to help the old ways, the old um, sort of energies that are perhaps, you know, tainted or corrupt or just no longer fit for purpose and no longer aligned, helping to strip all that away through this massive magnetic cosmic force that really you can't sort of negotiate with the Shapley, you can't um, overpower or control it. It is almost like it's so powerful, you just have to surrender and give in and step into the energy and just allow it knowing that this is for our greatest good that this is a process that again cannot be avoided we can't sidestep it and um, but it is having the trust and the faith that actually you know if you do let go and you just allow everything to be pulled away then you are creating this space for something really really beautiful to come in and to be born from that void and um, so and I will be talking about the new moon in Scorpio in a separate video but again you know there is that real sense of Scorpio is one of the signs that where we are required to go into the depths into the darkness to really look at the shadow and again this is going to be coming through the new moon video and the new moon energies really strongly now um for anyone that's been watching some of my recent videos you will know that I am very interested in exploring and learning about the jinkies at the moment and how every six days we are stepping into the energy of a different gene key. Now, on um, what day is it? The sun, the same day um, on Friday the 25th, as the sun aligns with the Shapley, we are stepping into gene key number 28, or in human design, it's gate number 28. And there's some really interesting, as always, and not really surprisingly, that very relevant energies that come through gene key number 28 is um, called embracing the dark side. And with this gene key, we have the shadow of purposelessness, the gift of totality, and the city of immortality and um, so you know super super interesting that we're working with this energy as we move through um sort of the final days of october and um you know I, i'll break down kind of what those three elements and expressions might mean i mean this is very much about facing our fears and understanding that really when we face our fears, that is where we have the biggest opportunity for growth. You know, they often say that growth and expansion sort of stands on the other side of fear. And it is very much about being able to push through, you know, if it's if it feels scary, um, it, you know, obviously within reason, um, if anything feels scary, it's often because you are on this sort of edge of a huge amount of expansion and you know often fear will push us to do things that perhaps you know we maybe feel that we're not ready to do or that we're not um that we're not able to do not capable of but actually you know it is this kind of energy within us that is really pushing us to um yeah to step out of our comfort zone of ultimately and take that leap of faith so when we're working with the shadow of the 28th gene key this is purposelessness and ultimately you know this is one of the biggest fears of mankind as richard rudd explains in his book you know this is effectively the fear of being extinguished it's the fear of death the fear that you know if you have no purpose or you feel this shadow of purposelessness you know what is the point <laughs> there is no point of living because ultimately as humans we need to feel that we have a purpose we need a reason to get up in the morning you know for anyone who's ever experienced depression you know that sort of sense of oh there's no point you know it is very powerful and it can really drag you really deep down into the depth so I guess you know in the shadow having a sense um, or a lack of purpose is you know is a massive shadow to work through and um, because ultimately you know we have to or, or overcome our fear of death and our fear of you know when the lights go out in order to find our purpose in so many ways now when we're sort of in this shadow of purposelessness 
you know, we, we're often sort of, we'll seek comfort in what we know. And for so many of us, you know, that is the systems that we have been brought up with. Sort of, we feel safe, we feel sanctuary within those systems and those established belief patterns. Because when we start to break out of that and maybe sort of say, actually, you know, I don't necessarily agree with that. You know, there is a real sort of societal expectation that no, we need to conform with what has always been done and with the systems that are being imposed on us. You know, this goes back to the conditioning and the programming that I often talk about that actually, you know, it is learning that we, we can actually experience um you know, a completely um, almost unexplored level of freedom. Step into the fear, then often, and we face our fears, that is often when we feel most alive. It is that sense of exhilaration and that sort of sense of accomplishment and celebration, you know, when you do do something that, you know, is feels really scary and that, you know, you're just not sure if you can do it, whatever it is. You know, some people thrive on that exhilaration and that adrenaline that is created through that. But ultimately, this is what we are all being asked to do it is to really face our deepest fears. And, you know, the sun in Scorpio and the sun moving through gate 28 is really going to ask us to do that and to look at the fears and the shadow face on. You know, this is very much sort of making me think of Medusa and the whole, you know, you have to look at your fears face on. And will you be frozen in fear or can you push through? So when we are working with the gift of the 28th gene key, this is totality. So again, you know, this is about acknowledging and embracing the fear and all the emotions that come up through facing this fear, through this sense of purposeless purposelessness. You know, the fact that, um, you know, we are here to experience all of it, the pleasure and the pain and you know, this is about really stepping into without any sort of um, excuse or any any way to sidestep or sort of skirt around or bypass a situation. This is about just stepping fully into it to being fully and totally committed to facing the demons, you know, if that is part of your path. And I think for so many of us, you know, we see something that scares us and we want to avoid it. We want to run away. We want to hide ourselves under the covers, under the bed, sort of, you know, protect ourselves from it. But actually, you know, this gene key and the energy of the Shapley as well is sort of really saying, no, it's time to look at your fears, look at the demons in the face. And by doing so, you know, you might just find that they're not as scary as you thought. And I want to just talk, um, briefly bring a story in here. Now, obviously, I follow lots of different people on YouTube, on Instagram, you know, on mailing lists, etc. But I am, um, I've been following a lady called Rebecca Barron, who's got a YouTube channel, Find the Light, RB. Um, she um, has got a Patreon channel and she was, um, I think it was actually um, a podcast that she did an interview with somebody recently Oops, that I was watching and she was recounting her story. She's got a really fascinating story and past and very gifted healer. Um, but she was saying that she, you know, certainly in her younger um, life used to suffer a huge amount of psychic attack, lots of demons coming after her, you know, and you know, there's, there's lots of, interest. I will share her website so that you can follow her if, you know, if you're interested. But one story that she was saying was that at one point she was under so much attack um, and she was with her children and they were being attacked too energetically. And she said, and it got so strong and so powerful that she just made a decision in that split second just to step into it just to sort of say okay it's all right I give up I surrender you know do your worst you can have me I give in I'm not I'm not prepared to fight anymore 
she said in the split second that she did this was was the moment when the light came in and her heart center just opened up and suddenly the room was filled with light and there was all these sort of angelic beings and ascended masters there you know to almost over the overcome the dark because the shadow had got so so big within her that you know it was it was by stepping into the shadow that she was then able to activate the light. And she said at that point, so many healing gifts just came flooding in and that totally changed her life. So, and I was listening to this story and it just really made me think so strongly of, you know, we do try to avoid our shadow. We try to avoid, you know, things that scare us or things that make us uncomfortable or things that we're ashamed of. And, you know, by doing that, we are rejecting the shadow when in actual fact, so much sort of part so much um of our role and our journey in this lifetime and part of the ascension is to integrate everything to bring everything back together into the whole and by hiding away from the shadow we are effectively perpetuating the separation and the division and this is a time when you know we have to say no although it may be fearful it may be uncomfortable it may be horrific traumatic you know all the words all the discomfort, all the horror, you know, this is a time when we have to look at the shadow face on and don't look away from it, don't run away from it, almost go towards it. Because by doing that, you know, we're going to be shown that actually it is part of us and it is part of an expression of source. Yes, it is the opposing, the opposition, the polarized version to light, but it is still part of source energy. And, you know, this is about just embracing all of it and really acknowledging that, you know, the shadow is part of the light and it is part of the whole and it is about bringing the two back together. And the only way to do that is to step into the dark because it is at that point then the light is activated and the light gets stronger. So I don't know if that's sort of, if you're able to follow that. I've heard a few other people talking about that recently as well, and it really, really resonates with me. And um, the the city, which is kind of the desired state or the ultimate state of gate or gene key twenty eight, is immortality. And this is the point where, you know, you have stepped into that void, into that sort of empty space, into the darkness, and you sort of move beyond. So you become immortal. You realise that we are spirits, that the whole sort of, you know, experience of existence is about constantly being in this cycle and the fact that you cannot die we cannot die yes our form may change yes we may leave we have may have to let go you know of all that we are strongly attached to but ultimately when we're in this state of immortality you know we have gone beyond the fear and this is where we experience the freedom and um, so you know, this is about really surrendering, Um, you know, when you just think you can't take any more, it is about stopping the fight, stopping this whole, oh, you know, we're in a spiritual battle, we're fighting the dark, you know, as long as we sort of stay in that mentality and that belief and that mindset that we're in this fight, we are perpetuating the division and the separation. And it is it is finding a way to overcome that and to move through it so that we can step into this state where we are almost beyond time, beyond form, and we are just at one with all that is no longer sort of standing in the light or standing in the dark or fighting the dark, you know, no longer in that sort of sense of separation you know it is just being at one with all that is now I always find it harder to talk about the city it's much easier for me to talk about the shadow and I am observing that as I do these videos but you know perhaps you know we're able to just grab pockets of that energy of that or of that way of being of that state of consciousness you know and as time goes by you know those pockets will become bigger and they will stay for longer until eventually you know we are able to be in that state um and that will become more of our sort of default setting as opposed to something that we just catch glimpses of but certainly you know 
it just it really feels that you know with this strong Scorpio energy with Pluto you know really in the last throes of the Capricorn era you know about to move into Aquarius but we have got this almost like it feels like a dark night of the soul as we move through the next couple of weeks but actually you know it is to be embraced it is about being able to see the purpose in the pain not to think oh it's all you know I'm just gonna give up there's no point it's not worth anything and you know I'm just gonna literally throw in the towel it's like no it's like sitting with that discomfort with that pain if you're being triggered you know rather than try and resist it or run away from it or turn away it's just sitting with that feelings all the emotions that are coming up because they're coming up for a reason they're coming up to be seen in the same way that the shadow and the darkness is coming up to be seen and it is not nice it's not comfortable it's not pretty and so many of us don't want to look at it we don't but it is it has to be seen because it is part of you know the collective energy it is part of the whole and I'm not saying it's going to be easy to sort of bring it back in because it isn't. It's really not easy, but it is like, you know, the biggest gain will come from the the biggest effort, if that makes sense. So that is what is coming through really strongly, both with the Jinky 28 and the Shapley aligned with the sun, stepping into the new moon on the 1st of November and just all this kind of, you know, Homia as well, playing a part, cutting through the old, creating space for this beautiful new energy to come through. But we do have to go through that darkness before we can get to the light. It is like being in the birth canal, you know, when you've left the sort of safe space of the womb, you know, you're coming down this tunnel and you don't know what is at the end of it. You don't know what light lies ahead but it is having the trust that actually you just need to keep going even if it is scary even if you do feel isolated and cut off cut off from all that you have known it is about just keep going step in to walk through that darkness because that is by doing so that is where you are going to be able to connect to the most powerful and strongest light and ultimately, you know, if there are sort of, uh, let's call them demons, but darker expressions coming forward, things that are triggering you, just sit with them, almost welcome them in and just say, OK, you know, come in, let's sit down and let's have a chat and let's see what you're about. Because often, you know, if something is really scary, you know, our default setting is don't look at it you know just again I keep saying turn away turn away and it's like it, that's the same expression that keeps coming forward it's like no just sit with the demon sit with the trigger sit with whatever it is that is bringing up this discomfort the pain you know that uh, even if it is just the most excruciating thing just sit with it because you may find that, you know, what you thought was really scary and fearful or really aggressive or, you know, whatever actually isn't when you look at it square in the face and when you see what it is that it is trying to draw your attention to or what it is trying to reflect back to you, you know. So for so much of, you know, triggers whatever it is that comes up it is having that presence and that awareness and that sort of i don't know higher state of consciousness to be able to say okay right you know that's really pissed me off or that has really triggered me or that's really you know just hit a button what is it what what is it within me that is coming up to be seen and this is about stepping into that state of totality and to just sort of sit with it all <laughs> and step into it all and to experience it all. We've been able to follow um, what is coming through um, and you know that it's resonated in some way and perhaps given you something to think about. Um, I, I will be back again soon. There's quite a lot to share over the coming days in terms of what is going on astrologically and energetically. So please do keep checking into my channel and um, subscribe if you haven't done already. Share the content if you know people that you know who may find value in it. 
And if you have not done so already and you're interested in my work and my content, um, please do sign up for my newsletter through my website. And if you want to work with me, I do readings, I do energy work. Um, so please check out um, the services that I offer there spiralbright.co.uk and I look forward to um yeah just coming back and sharing more soon thank you so much